Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Against the Public for June 7th. I'm Dana Lane. Today we're going to go through my top three Major League Baseball free plays for Friday's card. And of course, we'll wrap it up with our daily betting tip. After the show, please go to pickdogs.com where I'll have my premium MLB card locked and loaded. Good night last night. Cash more winners. Make sure you're involved tomorrow. And thank you to everybody who did get involved on Thursday. Jump on my single plays or better yet, jump on an MLB three pack and you can get that for $49.99. And, uh, and the individual plays and the three pack guys come with our pick dogs win guarantee. If you don't know what that is, that means you must profit. And basically it means you must win at least two out of the three. Uh, to uh, And if you don't, you get an immediate site credit for the purchase price. I think that's a fair offer, and I don't think anybody else uh, in the industry does something like that. So uh, get involved with a three-pack. And, of course, there's only one way to get involved with every play that I release, and that's to jump on an all-access pass, and you can do that for the next 30 days for less than $11 a day. The next 90 days for less than $10 a day, or better yet, guys, just jump on an annual all-access pass. It will take you right through football season, takes you right up to this time next year for one price of just $3.56 a day. So roll your sleeves up, grab the debit card, grab the credit card. Let's get to work. Make 2024 your best year ever. And you guys know what we did in football last year in college and pro football it's up on pick dogs right now uh, there's no question every play is is up up there for the public to see every single day uh, so everything is 1000 percent transparent i love that so make sure because if you go there you'll realize hey great you did this at a great football season a great college and pro football season last year uh, but this is the time to start building your bankroll. We're starting from Hall of Fame game on. We're not waiting. <laughs> it is time for football. Matter of fact, the CFL just started. It's That's just the, the first ingredient in the football season. So make sure you jump on an all-access pass right now. And, of course, uh, the NBA Finals have uh, kicked off. Uh, game one goes to the Boston Celtics. The Stanley Cup Final will start on Saturday. And I will have my Stanley, or I do have my Stanley Cup uh, package locked and loaded you get side and total and every single game uh, one little asterisk one little caveat to that is if a side is more than say a dollar fifty or so i'm not going to give that out so um we are still building bankroll doesn't matter the magnitude of the sport the bottom line is to always build bankroll and you treat these games at, at this the stanley cup finals you treat them as a, a june baseball game in cincinnati it's the same thing so that's uh uh, one little caveat to that. And, of course, we've been crushing the National Hockey League. Uh, we'll go into uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday's game 4-1 and one in our last five plays. And, of course, because uh, they haven't played in a long time, that record has kind of been doused a little bit. I think it's like seven or eight and one or in our last nine. But uh, the way that the website breaks down the picks, it's over the last seven days, last 30 days, and last 90 days. So last seven, four and one, but really on a good run. And uh, if you break it down and add the 30-day filter to it, 62% winners in the National Hockey League. That's number one with at least 25 plays. That gives you an idea of what we've been doing uh, on the ice. And, of course, the NBA has been strong all season, so make sure you get involved in that. Thank you to all my Major League Baseball customers. We're going to rock and roll tomorrow. It's a very dad thing to say. Let's roll, roll the sleeves up. Let's get to work right now. Get to PickDogs.com. On to our free plays for Friday. Rem remember, these are p probables. So it's a long time before first pitch. Make sure you get up in the morning. Just double-check the pitchers. Uh, but we're going to go with what we have. And, uh, and I have double-checked all these pitchers. So it looks like this is going to be the lineup for tomorrow. Start things off 640 Eastern Time, 969, 970. Minnesota Twins, $1.21, 8-under, minus 15 against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Joe Ryan against Mitch Keller. I think in this one, there's a good chance that we're going to catch the Pirates napping. Uh, an emotional three-game set against the Los Angeles Dodgers where they took two out of three. They had Jared Jones and Paul Skeens going. Uh, you know, every a, a lot of emotion in Pittsburgh. Uh, big shout-out to the Pirate fans. Uh, this is what it could be, uh, Robert Nutting, if you would actually put money into the team. Uh, talk, just focusing on starting pitching, Joe Ryan is 4-4 four four this season. Might be getting a little stronger. He's allowed just six earned runs over his last 19 innings. That equates to an ERA at 2.84. Twins are 7-5 and five in his start. But despite his success, 
this is a bounce back effort. He was lit up pretty good against the Houston Astros, probably his worst uh, start of the season. But this is one of my favorite situations where I'm getting a good pitcher that needs to bounce back after a poor effort. And these guys have been sitting there for five days thinking about this effort uh, or thinking about a poor effort, which is why you most of the time get the best out of that starter in their next outing. Pirates are 8-4 and four when Keller gets the ball. They've won five straight games behind Keller. Keller has dropped his ERA from 6.35 to 3.42 since opening day. But... With these two starting pitchers, I think we're going to be able to lean on them, and it really just comes down to offense, and it comes down to bullpen. And I think with both teams in the bottom third, we know that we can't lean on that offense. Uh, so we are going to make this selection based upon bullpens, and, and it's still a Pirates bullpen that, uh, you know, an area of the team that they thought was going to be their strength, but really has turned out to be their weakness. And whether it's uh, Holderman, Ortiz, Bednar, Chapman, uh, you know, throwing 104 is great. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, if you can't find a plate, that's a problem. Bednar almost got taken deep twice the other night. Um, thank God PNC held the held the ball in the park, and you know old Ortiz is Ortiz and Holderman. This, you know, some some days they're fantastic, some days they're not. This is just a a bullpen that I just can't trust, and I don't think uh, that Keller is going to lead them into the seventh or eighth inning to kind of bypass. Uh, you know, maybe bringing in uh, Ortiz or Holderman. If he has to bring in Ortiz, uh, the Pirates are in trouble for sure. But ideally, you want to get the Holderman, then you want to get the Chapman, and then you want to get the Bedmar Bednar. So that's uh, really what their uh, goal is on a nightly basis. I think Minnesota catches them in a spot here. This is why Minnesota is a $1.21 uh, favorite, and, and I think the odds makers and the, uh, the bookmakers are also thinking the same. So we're going to take Minnesota minus $1.21. 7.05 Eastern Time, 9.73, 9.74, Los Angeles Dodgers against the New York Yankees. Yankees and a Dodgers, so minus $1.10 each way. Nine is your total. Uh, uh, Yoshinobu. Yoshinobu, sorry, I knew I was going to screw that up. Yoshinobu Yamamoto against Cody Petit. Uh, Yamamoto is 6-2. and two. He's got a 3.32 ERA, 76 Ks in 65 innings this year. I think most would agree that Yamamoto has been has exceeded expectations after pitching seven seasons in Japan. Coming over and pitching for the Dodgers uh, has been absolutely fantastic. We might be finding a little bit of crack in his game. Well, we'll say that again. We might be finding some cracks in this game. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds good or not. But anyway, not as good as he was. You say a lot of words. Sometimes you wish you didn't. He's allowed 11 earned runs in his last 23 innings pitch. He has a 4.30 ERA in that span. And there were starts against the, those were starts against the Rockies. He started against the Reds. He started against the Diamondbacks and the Giants. The uh, Giants were definitely the best opponent he's faced out of the four. And he gave up four earned runs in five and two thirds against the Giants. Yankees are going to present the best lineup that Yamamoto uh, has faced in a city New York City, where probably is going to create a few jitters for him. Uh, I would imagine uh, pitching in Japan and growing and being Japanese born that, you know, like everybody else that's, you know, even if you're not in this country, you think New York City and Yankee Stadium is the epitome of baseball. I, I can guarantee there's going to be a few nerves. And then as far as Potita is concerned, he's making his third start. He also will be facing the best lineup uh, that he's been up against after starts against the Guardians and the Giants. He's stepping up in the spot of Clark Schmidt. He also is a kid that might be just putting a finger in the dam for a little bit until Garrett Cole, who had a rehab have assignment, uh, or Schmidt gets back in the lineup. But this is his in, in the rotation. But his, this is his chance to say, "Hey, look, Brian Cashman, I, I deserve a shot." Uh, he had a terrific start at AAA Scranton this year. Really good with the Yankees so far. By the way, the Yankees have outscored opponents 15 to five in his two starts. So we're going to take the Yankees minus a dollar ten. 6:40 Eastern Time, 9:57, 9:58. Arizona Diamondbacks against the San Diego Padres. Padres, min Padres minus a dollar 23, seven and a half over minus 12. Brandon fought against Michael King. It's an interesting number here as far as the total is concerned, considering the starters with um, considering the starters with with fought having a 4.32 ERA, he's allowed eight earned runs in his last 13 innings, and the numbers aren't great. But 
it has shown a little bit of growth over his rookie season. And if you remember uh, last season with Arizona, he was absolutely smacked around pretty hard every time he took the uh, took the uh, mound. His hits, hits per nine are down. Home runs per nine is down, and so is his walks per nine. So he's definitely going in the right direction. And, of course, Michael King, the former Boston College Eagle, has a, has terrific stuff. He's the main reason we're probably looking at a 7.5. I don't know. I, I thought we were going to see an 8 in this game, but, I, I, again, it's one of those games where I was very surprised by the total that came out. He's allowed just five earned in his last 18 and two-thirds innings at 2.41. Year Ray. Despite all that, we're looking at a Padres team uh, that is the top hitting team in the league. Probably wouldn't have come up with that if I just asked you uh, off the top of your head. But they are the top hitting team in the league, and Arizona is eighth in runs scored. Yet we're looking at a number that seems to me that there is a hard opinion by the odds makers, and especially when we're looking at good pitching and uh, two teams uh, or average pitching, but two teams that can really put runs up. I, I thought this was going to be an eight. We're looking at seven and a half uh, with minus a dollar seven to the under. I'm going to take that because I think that the odds makers are begging you to take the over. So naturally, we'll try to run the other way. Under seven and a half minus a dollar seven. So that's uh, our three plays for today. Before we close out our show, uh, let me give you our handicapping tips for, for our tip for Friday. And tonight, it's going to be very simple. I wanted to focus on managers. We talk a lot about players. We talk a lot about starting pitching. Um, you know, what happens to teams off of a day off? What happens to teams on the first game home after a road trip? I think managing is a very over or underrated aspect of handicapping. And uh, let's go through uh, this year. And, of course, it's all based upon, you know, the record this year. But I'll give you the... Uh, the the managers as well. Aaron Boone, of course, number one this year with the Yankees, 44 to 19 plus 15.5, uh, 15.15 units one. Stephen Bode of the Cleveland Guardians, 40 and 21, just behind Boone at 15.14 uh, units one for, uh, in his first season in Cleveland. Rob Thompson, Philadelphia Phillies, third season in Philly, 44 and 19 plus 10.42 units. The worst this year, you guys can guess this. Uh, Pedro uh, Pedro Griffel uh, with the White Sox, 15 and 47, 24.17 units. One Joe Espada with the Houston Astros, 28 and 35. That's a bit of a surprise. Minus 14.37 units uh, lost. That's of course uh, Espada's in his first season. And Skip Sh Skip Schumacher of the uh, 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 Marl is a 21 and 41 minus 13.84. Okay, so let's let's really see what happens when we expand the filter. And I think it's fair to maybe not expand it for five seasons. Well, maybe we'll expand it for the last three seasons. So here are the managers who are the best against the money line in Major League Baseball over the last three seasons. And number one is no surprise, Brandon Hyde of the Baltimore Orioles, 223 and 161, plus 60.12 units one. That is a product of cashing a lot of underdog tickets. Stephen Boat, number two of the Guardians, of course, in his first season, it counts 40 and 21 plus 15.14. And then Rob Thompson is the best over the last three seasons with the Phillies, 199 and 137 plus 9.04 units. The worst, Pedro Griffel, 76 and 148 with the White Sox, minus 59.16 units, second season as a manager. Mark Kotze, 135 and 253, minus 46.69 units. He's in his third season with the Oakland Athletics. And Bob Melvin, 201. He's the only guy that's over 500 over the last three seasons, uh, but not very good against the money line. 201 and 106, 186 rather, minus 33.55 units loss. Two years in San Diego first year in San Francisco. That covers that. So let's get nuts and let's see over the last 20 years, who is the best manager against the money line over the last 20 years? Well, that's Mike Socia. 50.30 units won 19 seasons with the Angels until 2018. Last coached in 2021 for Team USA. Led them to a silver medal in the Olympic qual qualifier tournament. The worst is Brian Price, minus 80.52 units. By far is the worst over the last five seasons. Of course, all with the Cincinnati Reds. 
decided to retire, couldn't blame him, then co coerced back into the game. Now he's a pitching coach, first season in San Francisco. So that's your betting tip of the day if you want to follow the managers. Not anything that, you know, you got to – do a you know take with you every single day and say this is like how i'm going to handicap but every day i'm going to give you just a little piece of the puzzle that you could throw in there and say okay well you know this this looks like a tool that i can use moving forward in handicapping baseball and that's really all i'm trying to do so if there's anything you'd like me to research just drop me a comment on the youtube channel if i have the numbers i would certainly uh, we'll get to it and uh, we'll bring it up on a on a on a show upcoming. So that does it for your free plays and your tip. Go to PickDogs.com. Get involved with one of my many available packages, including my All Access Pass that gives you every play that I release for one low price. Here's your Friday recap: Minnesota minus a dollar twenty-one, Yankees minus a dollar ten. Now wait, hold on a second on the Yankee number. That's what it is right now. We know Soto went out of the lineup tonight. So if he doesn't play tomorrow, expect that number to go in the Dodgers direction, giving us some plus money. We're still going to go with the Yankees either uh, either way. But wait on that a little bit. See if we can get a little bit better price. Arizona, San Diego under minus seven and a half, minus a dollar seven. So that does it for today's show. Thank you to everyone who continues to watch. For Against the Public, I'm Dana Lane. All the best to you and your wagers on Friday.